Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program is brought to you by Calhoun's. You see right there, you can follow them on social media. Uh, whether you're tailgating before a high school game and you need to go over and get a Feed 5 family pack, or maybe you're going to tailgate before the UT Georgia State game next week. Well, go get a Feed 10 family pack and make everybody happy. Or just head down to Calhoun's on the river for Vol Calls, which kicks off this week, I believe. That's on Wednesday nights. Calhoun's, the taste of Tennessee. All right, I want to welcome in the next group, all of my offensive guys, and they are offensive. Right here we right. have the former lineman Mike Stoll. The smart ones. The smart ones, there you go. Are you listening? Is it those uh, glasses? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there's, no, there's no glass in there. <laughs> they, they, they make me look smart. <laughs> and then our quarterbacks down there, we got former Vol Bobby Scott and former Vol Sterling Hinton. Gentlemen, hey, hey. thank you very much for being here. Glad, Glad to be, be here. Again. Yes, sir. All right, uh, I want to talk about Tennessee's offense. I said in that last segment, those guys got stuck talking with a negative because of the arrest. But here's a positive. Jim Chaney is back. And I think yeah. for most of all fans right now, if they're looking for reasons to be excited, number one on the list is probably Jim Chaney. Your thoughts on Jeremy Pruitt going out, finding the Georgia, targeting the Georgia offensive coordinator. Remember all the people freaking out over, oh, it's taking too long. <laughs> yeah, well, if you get the right guy, let it take six months. Who cares? They get Jim Chaney. Your thoughts on the return of Jim Chaney, Bobby Scott. I think it uh, was a very smart move on his uh, his account. Uh, uh, Cheney's had you know success just about everywhere he's gone, uh, so I think I think it was a positive move on on Jeremy Pruitt's uh, part. Sure. Look, hey, I, I, I like Coach Cheney, and, and I see him always teasing right now. I say, hey, Coach, when in doubt, go deep, baby, go deep. <laughs> but uh, he's going to dial it up. You know, the, the chess game when I was inside the ball is going to be interesting for us this year. And with Coach Cheney at that, that corner plays, you got, you got a Heisman Trophy winner coaching his position at quarterback now. T's back. I mean, I'm excited, baby. I'm excited. The, the Cheney thing, I mean, Mike, you don't have – this is a guy you don't have to worry about coming in to learn the conference. He's, he's seen you. One thing nobody's talked about much is I'm sure he's helped Jeremy Pruitt in terms of self-scouting because he's gone oh, against no, him. So do the uh, this is a guy you don't have to worry about training him and letting him learn the SEC. He comes in with a folder filled on this team, this team, this team. That's got to be a big plus for the offense. Yeah, it's, it's huge, and it's also a guy that sees the big picture, right? So he knows – the weaknesses because he's seen Tennessee and he's scouted and he's played against them. So now he knows the weaknesses, but he also knows how to minimize uh, a quarterback who's got a lot of potential with a very young, inexperienced offensive line. He's got a good receiving core. He's going to put his players in the best position to be able to make plays or to minimize their strong weaknesses. All right, well, let's, let's, let's start right there. Okay. You gotta go, any talk of the offense has to go to the offensive line to begin with. We all know there are question marks there. It looks like Trey Smith is going to be playing this year. Hasn't been officially announced, but still, do, as, of, as of all of the, uh, the reports from practice, this is a guy who's been getting a lot of work at left guard, not left tackle, moving back to left guard. Uh, you've got some freshmen that it, by the end of the year, I think Tennessee would be happy if you had two starting freshmen at tackle. Mm -hmm. Mike, um, Jeremy Pruitt has said to start the season, he could be playing eight to ten guys. They don't know their first five. There's an old line that if you've got two quarterbacks, you don't have one. If you've got ten offensive linemen, do you have five? What's, what's, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And yeah. I, I know the answer. I, I mean, I think you, you, especially with young guys, so you've got, you've got Wright, you've got Morris, as true freshmen that are coming in that they're saying they can probably play. First of all, if you watched the game last night against Miami and Florida, they had a true, true freshman at, at left tackle. Yeah. I think Florida ended up with nine or ten sacks, yep. Um, yep. And, and the quarterback was not comfortable. Um, so you've got a bunch of young guys in. You got to stick to five or six. I mean, even when I was playing, you know, if you went eight deep, and we had eight guys that were really, you, really you had good, legitimate NFL yeah, guys. We had, we yeah. had, we had guys that could play, um, and it was still scrapping. Number nine and ten may not see the field a whole lot. So I think you got to, you got to pare it down to let those five get into a rhythm and understand how to play with each other. Yeah, and those are guys who wound up being going to the league themselves. I mean, Absolutely. you're talking about you had future All Conference guys yeah. behind you. Right now, if you've got that, I'm sure they would be. Ready to go. They'd be, they'd be starting. Uh, right now. You know, <laughs> let me oh, go ahead. I'm just going to say, you know, Garantano uh, got beat up last year un, unmercifully. Yep. And uh, I think if, you know, if, if, if these guys are, in, are good pass blockers, can give him protection, I'll guarantee you he, he can get it done from yeah. behind that line. Well, he, he, his numbers weren't as bad. People, 
people soured on Garantano, I think, because he wasn't a Josh Dobbs who could carry Tennessee mm-hmm. to victory, or at least he hasn't so far. But he's certainly not the guy that's causing you to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I don't right. think any of the losses you go back and hang on Garantano mm-hmm. for the most part. But with your lack of depth there, at quarterback behind him, no experience behind him really, that's a concern in terms of keeping him upright. Let's talk about play calling. Last year there was a big debate that, oh, uh, the right play calls would hide this bad offensive line. I think you can mask it for short periods. I don't, if you've got an offensive line, and let's, let's say worst case scenario, this line isn't better from last year. Worst case scenario. I don't think you can hide that for 12 games, no matter how good Jim Chaney is. Sterling, am I wrong? You well, well you, you can't hide it, but you, you can definitely, uh, how I got to say, um, you, you, you can increase the, uh, the low side. Because, you know, with creative play calling, you have different strengths from different players. And if you get the ball in your playmaker's hands, you know, the last thing the defensive end is going to worry about is hitting the quarterback. He's worried about getting a pursuit angle to the guy who's got the ball. So and that's what I think Coach Chain is going to bring to the table. And I think Coach Johnson's got those running backs looking real good out there, too. Mike, can you how much scheme? Can, I think, uh, you, how can, much can you mask it? You can mask some. Um, but if, if we're no better up front than we were last year, I mean, you know, it, it was like watching a Rocky movie when Garantano would get hammered and you get up and, you know, it's yeah. like you just kind of keep shaking your head. Grasping he, the rope. He, he keeps getting back up. Yeah. He's straightening your face he mask. Out, yeah, he got knocked out of four games yeah. last year. I mean, so he, he's fighting. He's going after it. But uh, they've got to protect better. They've got to find their identity. Um, it's hard to be a true freshman and come in and run block and be physical against a 22-year-old man. I'm just persuading. I like the fact, though, that Garantano keeps coming back. Yeah. Tough, I mean, tough. he's a tough yeah. nut. He's good good. And, he, and he's Jersey a little boy. bigger this year as well. So. <laughs> oh, Jersey, Jersey boy. boy. Jersey, Jersey boy. boy. Jersey boy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, tell you what, we have an interesting mix of people, so I'm going to take advantage of it in this next segment. Sterling, Mike, you stay here. I'm going to bring back a couple of other guys from the 88 team or who were on the, in the program in 88 and 89. Losing season, turned it around. Are there any lessons you can take from that period 30 years ago? And none of us can believe it was 30 years ago. Years ago. <laughs> Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs>